Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. Now, some of you that perhaps are from a more religious background, there's a couple of you, uh, the um, uh, money's bad. Money's the root of all evil. You've heard that before. Uh, money is dirty. Uh, money is uh, the uh, root of all evil, as I just said. Money is not important. Money makes uh, you a bad person. Money blinds you from the truth. Money makes you greedy. Other values are more important. And these have been built in just like a lot of the other false information that you've gotten since you were born, uh, or actually since you were in the second trimester in your mom's belly, um, that have kept you from aggressively pursuing this. And, but then there should be another one. You're just fucking lazy. Some of you in this room are just fucking lazy. You're mentally lazy. You're satiated. And then you retire and you realize if you are with a big company or you had a 401k that doesn't get wiped out in the tsunami coming up, uh, you don't have enough money to retire. And the perks, et cetera, that you were used to, or the things you used to be able to write off, uh, for those of you that have your own businesses, 99% of you uh, that have ever come through here live off the company, uh, wrongfully. Uh, the, uh, and the, uh, when, you, when you get out uh, and you start uh, your first roll-up and you, and you successfully buy companies, uh, you're not living out of them anymore. You're having audited financials. You're ready to sell if an um, opportunity comes by and it doesn't take you a year to fix the books. Many of the people that you're going to ask for three years of financials uh, and three years of tax returns, some of which won't have financials. And it, it'll take them six months to reproduce something that uh, is kind of like financials. And that's why we also ask for the, uh, the tax returns. And again, if the tax returns and the financials uh, are in plus or minus 10%, next. And again, and this is really important, I was, got some emails last night. It's not your job to listen to them to explain why. I don't care how much, how much meat you think is still left on the bone there or is on the bone, or what a, a potentially, we don't buy potential. We buy free cash flow, period. It's not your task to listen. Some of you are better listeners than others, okay? I'm not a good listener. Remember, you've got six or five minutes to pitch your deal to Bill Gates or Elon Musk. That's it. And I have, I have always had trouble. It's hard for me to say hello in five minutes. Because I've got an opinion on everything. But then again, I'm a fountain of knowledge. I know a lot. And I make it my job to know a lot. But it's not, again, it's not your job. You, you hear these guys uh, seven months to the first deal. Marcus Bauer, I think, was eight months to the first deal. That's too long. Because he listened or he cajoled himself into thinking, well, if I do this and I do this to this company, uh, it's going to be that much more profitable. And when you add up all those days that you spend doing that, you're, you know, you're up to 17 months or 14 months is the average now. But it, it could be four months. It could be 12 weeks. Or it could be 26 days like the pig puppy. As much as he may... Uh, not be your cup of tea, that's an understatement. He's an effective little bastard. And I would rather you not necessarily look like him or sound like him, but certainly be as effective as him. Now, I stopped collecting these alibis, I don't know how many years ago. But it, it's, it's laughable because I was reading them this morning. Uh, these are the reasons that I was given maybe the first 18 or 20 years of doing the seminar was part of the questionnaire. Failure, uh, alibis for failure. If I didn't have a spouse or family, if I had enough pull, if I had money, if I had a better education, if I had good health, if, only ha if I only had time, if times were better, if other people understood me, uh, if conditions around me were only different, 
If I could live my life over again, if I didn't fear what they would say, if I had been given a chance, if I now had a chance, if I could do what I want, if I were only younger, if nothing happens to, me, to stop me, if other people didn't have it in for me, if I had been born rich, if I could meet the right people, if I had the talent and the, uh, that some people have, if I dared to assert myself, if I only had embraced post opportunities, past, past opportunities, excuse me, if, uh, if people didn't uh, get on my nerves, that's mine, okay? Uh, if I didn't have to keep house and look after the children, if I could save some money, if my boss only appreciated me, if I only had somebody to help me, uh, if I lived in a big city, if I were only free, if I weren't so fat, if I could just get a break, if I hadn't failed, if everyone didn't oppose me, if I could had married the right person, if my family wasn't so extravagant, uh, if luck were not against me, if I were uh, not true, if it were not true that what is to be will be, if I lived in a different neighborhood, if I had a business of my own, if my family understood me, um, if I could uh, just get started, if I had the personality of some people, if my uh, talent were known, if I could only get out of debt, if I only knew how, if I didn't have so many worries, if people weren't so dumb, that's also me, okay? If I were sure of myself, if I hadn't been born under the wrong sign, if I hadn't lost my money, if I hadn't have, have a past, if other people would only listen to me, if, and this is the greatest of them all, I had the courage to see myself as I really am, I would find out what is wrong with me and fucking fix it. Then I may have a chance to profit on my mistakes and learn something from the experience of others, for I know there is something wrong with me, or I would not now be where I would have been if I had spent more time analyzing the weaknesses and less time uh, for alibis. Those cover everybody in this room. I've been around 30 years. And it's never too late. We flipped them from, 70, from 13 to 77. And the examples that I gave you for the 13 and the 77 year old, their, their uh, initiative and their want and desires were about equal. Except the 77 guy had a lot of baggage, but now, you know. But these are the reasons. Now, Jeff asked about the steps, although they're all over my site, uh, but he is brain dead, and he's slow, and he's he got inbred. So I'm going to go through the seven steps right now. I don't normally do this, but for the inbreds from Kentucky and Dakotas and et cetera, I mean, if, if you have to ask me what the fucking steps, you wasted your fucking money. Okay, well, I'm looking at you because you're, you're his, uh, his twin. You're his, you're his unidentical twin. Okay, creating your personal foundation, what does that mean? The new rules, beyond common sense, focus on the ends, not the means, passion, and uh, getting comfortable with it, okay? The new rules are there are no rules, as long as it's moral, legal, and ethical. Uh, most of you aren't going to do step one. You're just not. Because it's like, you know, well, I know how to brush my teeth. Uh, well, no, I don't use floss. No, I don't do it. Yeah, well, you're not going to do it. You're just flat fucking aren't. But the people that, you heard Marcus, you, uh, you heard um, uh, Belgian Waffle, you know, they did. Uh, Peter, he did. And number two is clarify your vision. If you don't see where you're going, as clear as the painting, uh, famous painting of me and my uh, dog Driller up there, now, or soon after you leave here, you're pissing in the wind. You know, the athletes, they see themselves completing the pass. They see themselves going over the high jump. You see themselves uh, uh, in the long jump. I like it when it's called broad jump myself. You know, the, uh, but if you don't see it, you have to a difficult time accomplishing it. Um, building the perception. The kids today say, fake it till you make it. I don't like that. 
uh, uh, perception is, bless you, perception is reality. Uh, the, uh, today you're going to hear a Nelly story about when he rented a Rolls Royce with a chauffeur, uh, when he was competing for a deal uh, with um, Saudi, I think it was. Uh, and uh, when I was getting dressed this morning, the, um, when I was poorest, and I used to buy suits at Brooks Brothers, and I, I, I told myself, well, it was good enough for Abraham Lincoln, it's good enough for me, and they have clothed presidents since Abe Lincoln. The, um, but I, I, I'm considered a clothes hog. You know, I, I spent at least a, a million and a half, maybe $2 million on clothes. Okay? Uh, after that, I was a car hog, because I used to drive myself until uh, uh, I stopped driving. Uh, and so the cars that I had, and I had a Rolls Royce since I'm 25. I still remember I spent 35,000, 35,750 bucks on the Silver Cloud. My, uh, my, I had $3,000 down payment, and my monthly payments, this is 1971. My monthly payments were 350 bucks a month. That's a lot of fucking money for a college student that doesn't have a job. But when I rolled up, they normally thought that I was the chauffeur. Oh, well, when's your boss getting here? The first big house I bought uh, uh, with my uh, girlfriend, soon-to-be wife, which was my first wife, they said, when are your parents getting here? Uh, the, uh, and it's worked, and I've been roles, uh, driving rolls ever since, uh, you know, uh, over uh, 50 years. Um, perception is reality. Remember, you have two times to make a first impression. First is when you look, and most of you look okay. Uh, and two, second, when you open your fucking mouth, and that's when you fall now. That's when you fail, because uh, you're not going to go to improv. You're not going to go to Toastmasters. And this is all on the site. You're not. You said, well, I'm 45 years old. I've gotten through life so far. So what? And I would say, well, how's your program working out now? Dog shit. In the cosmos of time, this is pocket change you guys have. You heard Simon the Bell, uh, $30,000 for dinner. I was at that dinner. Okay. Uh, the, uh, I've seen him drink a, a case of champagne with these eyes by himself. He, he pisses through money. He should use it to wipe his ass for toilet paper. No backup plan. Creating your dream team. Some of you have already attempted that. Uh, you made some mistakes. You may go back and make some changes. The most imp important person, after your mom made the mistake of having you, instead of rolling down her fat thigh, uh, is your chairman. Pick carefully, because um, either you get a shark animal uh, eat your heart like uh, Peter has, or you go through 20, 25 members like Josh did. Uh, but he came out the other side. But uh, even though you're not 17, 18 like Josh was when he was picking his dream team, your bot is naive. And as Peter said towards the end of his webinar, he said there's sharks out there and you've got to fight them every day. And that's exactly true. That's exactly true. Um, Quantum Leap, uh, a more action plan. Uh, there's growth and working capital. Uh, they, I already told you organic growth is dog shit. Uh, don't waste your time. Uh, the, uh, you heard... Uh, Marcus say, my job is for uh, cash flow not to be reduced, meaning the businesses that he have don't go down and he continues to buy businesses, um, which is easier said than done. Uh, we talked about working capital, the working capital trick where you pull it out uh, and add it to the purchase price in addition to the uh, line, of, line of credit trick. Um, internal growth versus acquisition, external growth, there's no comparison. Uh, it's easier to buy revenue that's already been risked or de-risked and, um, and use that bought revenue as um, uh, payment against debt service. Now, pay, now, this is if there's anything that's more misunderstood than anything on these seven steps, it's six, pay yourself, directors, and employees first. Elvis Presley Jr. back there doesn't understand this one no matter how many times he, he puts a spin on it. 
you pay when, if you're absolutely in a growth mode, like I, I told you, not everybody that does this needs to pay themselves to pay the rent. Some of the people that come here do need to pay the rent, and you know, they're up to here in debt, et cetera, okay. But for the most part, the, the model is for you to be able to take money out mainly when you recapitalize or refinance. You hit the cash register. You hit the cash register. Um, the model is, is directed to be able to pay off the fees, if you have fees. Now, uh, the accountants and lawyers won't like seller finance because they, they're not going to know there's no, no money to pay them. They're going to know that. But when you do the working capital and the line of credit, not trick, but uh, methodology, you'll be able to pay them. And remember, the ENYs, the KPMGs, and the big law firms don't need cash flow like you do. And once you pay fees, you own them. They will tell you when they're going to go on a vacation and you either approve or you don't approve. They will uh, tell you, uh, the, uh, can we send you an invoice? And that's all true. And, it, and after you've done this two, three, or four years and you don't have that kind of relationship, you should have it from the beginning. But if you don't have this kind of relationship with your professionals, then you did something wrong. You did, you did a lot wrong, not, not, not just something like in one thing. Uh, and uh, we're not buying anything that we don't have plan to exit, except for Anelli, who's building a legacy, he wants to leave it to his boys. And there's four or five guys out there that are building legacy businesses, and they want to, you know, they're never going to exit. They're never going to. Ford, Motor Company, et cetera. Uh, and it's, as, as the young man just said, maybe 10, 20 minutes ago, it's easy peasy. When you stay laser beam focused, it's easier to focus on the few, not the many. You heard Jason Nagy say yesterday he would not recommend rolling up two things at a time, although he's done it successfully. Okay? He's uh, extremely focused, but he, even he, he lost focus. He said he made mistakes with his first board, uh, actually, in, and his second board. Uh, he made mistakes, you know, if he, as he says, this is a slight exaggeration. If you don't want something accomplished, give it to the board. There's some truth in that. Because they don't want in, they, in their uh, uh, golden era of their career to have that, uh, their reputation be smirched in any way, shape, manner, or form. Okay. Uh, uh, most of you guys in here aren't old enough to worry about that yet. Uh, but in another 10 or 15 years, you will be concerned. And you, know, uh, uh, you will think, wrongfully in my opinion, uh, that uh, no legacy is better than uh, a bad legacy. Uh, I'm of, of the school that any publicity is good, even bad, because they soon forget uh, beyond the headlines uh, what it was written for anyway. Um, the, uh, this is not a SWOT analysis program. We're not worried about those, because cash flow always, always covers debt service, otherwise next. No matter what you can see, the vision, you can see Valhalla just over the horizon. I'm telling you, it's nine times out of ten, it won't be there or it won't be anything even remotely like you think it is over the, over, uh, the horizon and you'll waste time. And you've heard in different ways, almost everybody that you've heard so far, you know, we can make money uh, the, uh, back, uh, but we can't get our time back. Goodbye, YouTube.